Hi everyone, it's so good to have you back for another devotional, but today I just wanted to do another one of those, just talk for a little bit. And I wanna really commend everybody that is teaching that this Sharpie permanent marker is the mark. It is so important for that message to go forth. But I also wanna encourage people to don't just stop there. There are more deceptions that we need to be figuring out. And one of them, uh, you might want to ask the Lord, why did he roll out the mark before the pre-trib rapture of the bride? That kind of, you know, shook us up a little bit and I think is what maybe caused so many people to not think it was the mark. But as you will see in the book of Revelation, the only timing that is referred to in regards to the mark is at mid-trib. So we needed to figure out, look through the scriptures and find out why did God allow the mark to be rolled out before the rapture of the bride? Now, as you know, we teach in this channel, the pre-trib rapture involves the bride and then sometime after that, there is going to be a person that rises up and confirms a covenant with the many. And that starts the clock ticking. By then, we will have seen the two witnesses in Jerusalem begin to prophesy. We will see the 144,000 Jewish evangelists all over the world preaching the gospel. So the church many Jews and many Gentiles will be brought into the church at that time. The whole Bible will still be taught. The seven letters to the churches will be taught. Uh, the step one of the mark will still be mm, being distributed. People will still be taking it, even though we are saying, don't take it, don't take it. But we do know that a lot of people still do not realize it is the mark. But the good news is, because there is good news in this situation, and that is people have until mid-trib to repent that they were believing their politicians, that they were deceived. We need to remember that Eve was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. She did not have a sin nature like ours, yet she was deceived. So yes, Holy Spirit-filled believers can be deceived into taking the mark. And what I have found very interesting is there's people who will admit they're not saved, they're not Christians, but even they know this is the mark. We have people that don't have a real mature or a, the intellectual capacity to connect dots, and even they know this is the mark. We have people that are filled with the Holy Spirit and have connected dots about other things, but they don't know it's the mark. And what this tells us is the only reason why people like you and I know this is the mark is by grace, unmerited favor. That's the only reason why we know this is the mark. Okay, so now, why would God it seemingly make it difficult for people to recognize this is the mark? Well, you know, he's a brilliant genius, the genius of all geniuses. There's numerous reasons, as we have discovered, of why he would allow the mark to be rolled out while the bride is still here and why it's a two-step marking process. 1 Corinthians 15, 46, the natural comes first and then the spiritual. We know that at mid-trib is when the spiritual aspect of the mark is rolled out. We know that the beast is going to give the image breath, which is spirit. We learned in the last video that spirit is the spirit of blasphemy and there is no forgiveness for those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit. We know that the church will have been removed and any uh, left behind believers by that point will be martyred. They'll have to lay down their lives to prove who their alliance really is with, whether it's the beast government or God's government.
government. So God will have all of his believers raptured up at mid-trib, that is the church, the Jewish and Gentile church. And we know that there is a pre-trib rapture, a mid-trib rapture, and a post-trib translation of the mortals who are the new converts, because there will always be new converts being made throughout Daniel's 70th week. We know this because in Revelation 14, after the church is gone, we see angels preaching the gospel, prophesying, and warning people not to take the mark. God is fulfilling all of his promises to the bride, to the church, and to Israel. So the reason why he has allowed the mark to be rolled out while the bride is still here is because he is still making determinations of who the bride is and who the sleepy church is. At mid-trib, he is going to be making determinations of who are going to be the Jews that are going to be slaughtered, sold into slavery, and scattered all over the world, and who's going to be the group, the remnant that flees to the wilderness. So you see, God is testing every soul right now. It's the perfect way to do that. It's the perfect way for him to provide them with evidence of whether they are believing their politicians, the serpent government, or whether they are believing God's government. He is still deciding who is the bride. You know, it's very interesting because a lot of people are offended when I say that God tests people. Yet we see it right there in John chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. He was testing Philip. There's thousands of people that need to be fed. And Jesus says to Philip, where are we going to get the bread to feed these people? And the scriptures are very clear. Jesus was testing Philip. He wanted to see what Philip was going to do. And isn't that interesting? It was over bread, sustenance. Hmm, what a great way to test people. And God is testing people right now. People are getting the, the recipe, thinking they're not going to be able to go to the grocery store if they don't get it. And that's very likely. Someday that is going to happen. It's happening in Germany. I don't know if you have read but in Germany, the grocery stores have been given the right to refuse service to anybody that has not received the special sauce. Well, we know that's coming to every nation. So you see, it's wonderful, really, that God is testing people this way because he's revealing their heart to themselves. I want you to consider the parable of the prodigal son and notice that the, the prodigal son, he became so hungry, he began rehearsing what he was going to say to his father, hoping that his father would let him come home. So in this rehearsal, he, made, uh, he decided he was going to say, I'm not even worthy to be called your son anymore. Well, that's interesting because the scriptures tell us that those who believe in Christ, he has given them the, the right to be called sons of God. So here comes the prodigal son, knowing what he was going to say to his father. And the father said, go get the robe, go get the ring, put sandals on his feet. He didn't even have shoes on when he came home. He had gotten the Sharpie marker. He went off to the world. He it loved entertainment, all those gorgeous women, the food, mm, the fine dining. But he realized it's not as good as what I had back at my father's house. So he wanted to come home. 
we are still in the age of grace. The church is still here. The blood of Jesus Christ is still flowing. God is not at this time picking and choosing which sins that have been confessed and people are seeking forgiveness for. He's not saying, oh, I'm going to forgive that one, but not that one. You got that step one. You got that jab. I'm not going to forgive you. Mm -mm. No, it's not the time for that. He tells us when it's time for that. That's at mid-trib. But the prodigal son comes home. They're having a celebration. The older son, who had never gotten, done anything wrong, had, didn't get the jab. Somehow he thinks he was so full of the Holy Spirit, he figured it out. Somehow he thought, oh, I'm so intellectually smart. I connected dots, and I figured out not to take that stuff. And the father comes out to him and pleads to the older son, ah, come into the house and celebrate with us. You notice in that parable, the older son never went in. What does this tell us? It is more important to God that he picks a bride for his son that has a humble and repentant heart than a son who's done everything right but is antagonistic against the son who did make a mistake, who was deceived. So I just want to, again, commend all of you who are on your channels warning people that this is the mark of the beast. It is wonderful. It needs to keep going. We need to keep communicating this message. But I also am noticing that it is forming a lot of older sons in some of the ways we're presenting our information. And I just really am hoping that all of us who are watching each other's channels will be lovingly help the prodigal sons recognize they've been deceived. And I realize it's hard. When I try to share with people that they have received the mark, I've noticed a couple different responses. Some are extremely angry with me at the th thought that they could be deceived. Some are immediately repentant. Immediately, and they see it when I show them the evidence, when I show them the scriptures, when I reveal, wait, there's good news. This is step one. Here at mid-trib, when the image is given breath, that's mid-trib. That is the spirit going into every person who has not repented for getting step one. Once I show them that information, some are like broken and contrite and humbly repenting, asking God to wash them in his blood, to heal their bodies, to stop the progression of what that recipe is doing to their body. And they are helping to warn others. Now there's some that get mad at first and then you give them a little time, they come back and, you know what, you're right. I was deceived. I didn't like hearing that I was, but you're right. I was deceived and I've repented. So you see, I just feel like it's so important that we continue warning people this is the mark, but make sure we're not creating a church full of older people brothers because God is looking for prodigal sons who know they made a mistake along with many millions of people. You know, we have moms that are not allowed to take their children home from ICU unless mom and dad have been inoculated. We have people being denied of medical treatments that they need unless they get the inoculation. You know, until you are in that situation, you know, it's easy for us to sit here right now in good health and say, oh, we would never do that. Oh, I would leave my baby in the ICU. Psh, really? 
All right. Okay, that's just all I wanted to say. I wanted to keep this video short. I just want to let you know that our Bible prophecy study team, I am telling you, we've got, we are on the trail of some amazing things. And I don't want to present them till we all have our P's and Q's, you know, in the right place, all of our T's crossed and I's dotted, but we are discovering some amazing things about the mark, step two, about what's going to happen because really, okay, I'll give you a sneak peek. That step two is Satan's counterfeit of the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. If you will remember all of God's people who were marked as believers were in that upper room praying for days, their hearts were marked, their actions revealed who their alliance was with. Their heart was marked by God because he saw how they were behaving. And since they had received step one of his mark, then he poured out step two, which was the spiritual, which was the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Same situation happened with Cornelius. All of the, his friends and family were gathered he had been faithful. Cornelius had been faithful, loving the Jewish people, giving alms and offerings and, and helping the Jewish people. So God saw his heart. Did all of those good deeds save him? No. Cornelius did not have eternal life until step two, when the Holy Spirit came into him. So you see, the serpent is counterfeiting God's two-step process. So what you're going to see when we're up in heaven looking down at that, what we're going to see is that beast giving the image breath. That is going to be Satan's counterfeit of the day of Pentecost. And every person who has that recipe in their body that's been slowly daily changed more and more into a computer hardware system ready and waiting for the software, they're going to get it on that day. So this is why we must urge people to repent if they have received it and lovingly and patiently. Okay, you get it, you get it, I, I see that. All right, I am gonna talk to you later. Thank you for following this channel. I appreciate you so much. May God continue to put in you a curious spirit, allow you to ask him questions, draw you to the scriptures so that you can find the answers because this is an exciting time and we've got many more amazing things to reveal to you on this channel. So thank you for following this channel. I really appreciate it. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye.